Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector, and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. From time to time, I get questions from people about risk, and I wanted to create a dedicated video to answer some of those questions. Reggie, should I take out some additional insurance when mailing my comics off to have them graded? Is there a better way to protect the books that I'm putting in the mail? Reggie, I built up an awesome collection over the last few years and I have some concerns about natural disasters and fires. Is there something that I can do to actually protect my collection? What do you do to protect yours? Reggie, I'm curious, is homeowner's insurance or renter's insurance enough to actually protect my collection should something happen? My poor acting skills aside, these are legitimate questions that I get from subscribers regarding risk and more importantly, risk mitigation. And so in this video, what I plan to do is to illustrate why I have collectible insurance. I found that this is the best way for me to mitigate some of the risk that I see with having a collection. And it honestly doesn't matter whether your collection is incredibly expensive or just a few bucks, Collectible insurance is not a bad way to go. Before we get to the list, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the sponsor of this video, 9panel.com. I encourage you to head over to this website and take a look. It is a wonderful resource for finding and buying raw and graded comics. And if you're a seller, this is also a solid platform as well. In addition to having a user-friendly interface, this website is also secure and so you can buy with confidence. 9panel.com is linked in the description of this video. Give it a click, head over, and I do not think that you are going to be disappointed with what you find. With that said, let's get to the list. Tip number one has to do with the fact that natural disasters are unpredictable. Right now, we are seeing hurricanes and crazy flooding in various parts of the country. I just was on Instagram and saw someone's roof that was caved in because a tree had actually fallen on it. Like they avoided the flooding, but the tree fell on the house, which open the house up to the elements. And that is a scary thing. There is nothing like standing and watching your community catch on fire. And that has actually happened to me twice. I've lived in California two different times and each time I've been near some massive fires. And that is a scary thing. We've seen these fires decimate entire communities, entire cities, and it's scary. And so for me, having collectible insurance allows me to mitigate some of that uncertainty that comes with these natural disasters. It's not something that you can plan for, if you know what I mean, but by having the insurance, if it happens, that gives you some type of protection. Tip number two is that by having insurance, it gives me peace of mind. It honestly allows me to sleep better. And I think that I'm entering my third year of having collectible insurance with Collect Insure. That is the company that I use. And I can tell you for a fact that the very next day after securing my insurance years ago, I slept better because I did not have that worry in the back of my mind that something bad was going to happen to my collection. And I oftentimes will increase the amount of insurance when I go out and make a major purchase like the 100K collection or when I acquire a couple of really big books. I actually bump up my insurance again to give me some peace of mind that everything is going to be okay. And one of the questions that people immediately ask is, won't my homeowner's or renter's insurance actually cover me? The reality is that it probably will not. Um, a lot of times in your homeowner's or renter's insurance will cover the purchase price of something. If, if, if at a hundred percent, right, they will cover the purchase price, not necessarily what that comic or collectible might actually go for based upon the fair market value. So that is one big reason why I have collectible insurance. So for example, if I buy a comic for $500, but that comic has gone up to $1,500 or $2,000 because of what has happened in the collectible market, there is a chance that my homeowner's insurance will not cover that. 
There are people out there that will try to put riders in place. Again, I don't know the ins and outs of the insurance business, but even riders will not potentially give you the type of coverage and protection that you need versus collectible insurance. And so if you have some concerns, I definitely encourage you to reach out to your insurance agent and to have a conversation about what is and is not covered. Tip number three is really around my desire to focus on family and not stuff. <laughs> In years past, I was very much into the material things, uh, but over time, I've learned that there are other more important things out there like family. And so my focus, should there be some kind of disaster, whether it be a fire or some other kind of natural disaster, I want my focus to be on making sure that my family is safe and taken care care of versus trying to focus on my collection and what may actually happen to that. Yes, I'm going to be very sad if something happens to my collection, but my family is certainly more important to that. Now, I will offer up to you that one thing that I have done is set up what I call an O oh sugar box because we are politically correct here. It is a box that is set aside with really expensive comics that should something go bad, I will grab that one maybe two two bins, maybe two bins of really awesome stuff and take that with me. Everything else uh, will be left up to fate of what will happen. But again, having that, that peace of mind, having that ability to focus on what is truly important is part of the reason why I have collectible insurance. Tip number four is around transit insurance. And this is one of the more attractive aspects of collectible insurance in my mind. This allows you to have some coverage when a comic is not in your possession and it might actually be getting mailed out to go to a presser or to be graded or maybe you're even buying a, a comic from someone and it is not in your possession, it is in transit, you can actually have some protection for that comic. And there are stipulations around the freight company that is being used, whether it be United States Postal Service or UPS or FedEx, whether signatures are required, there are some stipulations there that you need to look into, but you actually have some pretty awesome protection. And in my mind, this protection actually is better than the protection that you would get with individual shipments with the freight carrier directly. It is more comprehensive in my mind. It is more inclusive. It is part of the collectible insurance. And I've never had to actually try to collect from the United States Postal Service for something that is damaged, but I do not imagine that that is an easy task versus having separate collectible insurance that has a transit clause in it. And in my head, it might also be less expensive as well. So instead of having individual packages go out with individual insurance, you actually have one comprehensive policy that is written that covers the entire collection, including when it's in transit. Tip number five is that it's actually cheaper than you would imagine. One of the big things that I had in the back of my mind when I started thinking about collectible insurance many years ago was that it was gonna be terribly expensive. And I can tell you for a fact, it is not. It is not. What is expensive is having a collection, whether it be $3,000 or $30,000 or $300,000 that is lost because of a flood, a fire, or some kind of natural disaster. That is expensive. A few hundred dollars for a lot of insurance per year is chump change. So what I will tell you is that before you dismiss the idea, before you poo-poo it, you at least want to look into it. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, I use Collect Insure, and I am not getting paid by Collect Insure to do this video, but I do it because this is a worthwhile thing. I will also tell you that I do believe that both CBCS and CGC actually use Collect Insure for the comics that are in their possession. Because as you would imagine, they have millions of dollars of comics in their possession at any time going through various services, whether it be restoration, removal, cleaning, pressing, grading, they have to have insurance in place. And I do believe that both of those grading companies use Collect Insure to protect your comics when they're in their possession. 
So with that, I'm going to wrap this video up. I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch. If you have collectible insurance out there, let me know what your thoughts are and what your experience has been. I also want to take a moment to again thank the sponsor of this video, 9panel.com. There is a link in the description of this video. Click that link, head over, and check them out. As always, if you need to reach out to me, feel free to do so on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care.